about right now with Dr. Wooten is we're going to talk about the, the, the process, routine. process and routine, and how to get better at whatever you're working at. But we're going to right now use some of the Wilcox and stuff as an example, right? So I wanted to use the piece Rough in the Single Drag, and we started going over it a little bit. And the reason is because this piece, just about every measure of it is applicable to the kit, right? So we're going to slow it down to about 60 beats per minute. We're going to loop one measure at a time. And, and John, this is a question I want to ask you. So when you are preparing a new piece, what are some of your practice methods? I want this segment to be about how we practice. Slow it down, break it down, so you can throw it. Because you're not going to throw it down if you don't break it down. We're all impatient people. We want to we be good now. You know, but that's not, that's not how it works. If, if I have a student, some of, you know, that they were doing lessons yesterday, did we not break things down and slow them down? Okay, so some to, I mean, everyone's different. So some people we had to break down to, to the motion in your hands or fingers. Others just a, a measure, the turnaround measure. And if, if it's an Elvin Jones solo for me, that I'm trying to learn, I will break it down to almost half tempo and I will repeat one measure over and over and over. And each time that I play that measure, I try to play it with better feel, with better time, with better dynamics, with better sound, right? Every time I play it, I try to make each measure better. Now, when we're doing the rudimental stuff, same thing. Just repeat a measure over and over. So this stuff comes from repeating the repetition of the repetitions of the repetition, right? But we're using the rudimental stuff as an example, but if it's, if it's Afrobeat, right? And you wanna get better at Afrobeat, well you gotta shed it one measure over and over and over, then add the next measure over and over and over, then add those two measures together. What we've talked about is understanding this rudimental stuff, I think, is really great because anytime you see a drummer playing something, you guys, y'all ask me questions all the time. Man, what was that that you played? I saw you last night at Tips, Dragon Smoke, that was awesome. What was that fill that you played going into the third chorus of, 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 of Groove Me, baby, right? Here's the groove, though, right? gets a book. Six stroke roll, but 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 I put a spin on it. I didn't just go right? I phrased it. I put some swang on it. I put some stank on it. Right? It wasn't I went right? I'm putting some Philly Joe Jones swang stank on it. But my point is, knowing this rudimental stuff will make it so that anytime you see somebody play something, you can be like, I know what that is. Coleman was like, six stroke roll, right? Yeah. That's, the, that's the purpose of, of studying some of this stuff. It's like our alphabet. What, what, he's, what he's saying is very important. And what ha needs to be understood by uh, a lot of people misinterpret the, the movements as being kind of a military thing, very strict kind of uh, study. It's not. 
it's very loose, actually. It's just a beginning, and it's just a starting point. It's our vocabulary. And just like in any, any language, you can pronounce the words differently. So, like a six-foot world is a perfect example. And can I say something? Yeah. And then eventually you can make up your own words. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's just, it's a beginning. It's a starting point. And where it goes from there is, is only limited to your imagination. We start moving accents, moving diddles around. It's no longer that the, the fundamental rudiment, but it never was meant to be. Okay? And, and six stroke rolls, I have people that argue this is the correct way to play a six stroke roll. And I have other people that argue that say this is the correct way to play a six stroke roll. So those are just different interpretations. You can interpret these rudiments many, many ways. So check it out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with this. One that's sort of interpretation and kind of morph. Uh, I'm going to start with a really tight, even less than 30 second note roll, and then morph it to a six tuple. And anything in between is game. And depending on what kind of music you're playing, it's going to determine how you interpret this six stroke roll. Like, uh, we, I, I marched in the Phantom Regiment, uh, and we played classical music. So a lot of the, a lot of the roles were very quantized, uh, 30 second notes. But then like, I think of uh, other cores or other music that we play, if you're marching with the Bridgman or you're playing funk, like this six stroke roll, like Stanton plays, much more open, almost a six tuple. Okay, so I'm gonna go from one to the other. So just to show you, and this is a good practice to do, just so you, when it comes time, you can interpret these roles any way you want. It's the same rudiment, and it's no, none of those are the right way to play it. They're all the right way. There's no such thing as the right or wrong way, really. But you want to play it in a way that fits in with the musical context that you're in, and you also want to play it in a way that it fits with who you're playing with. So if you're playing with a snare drum line, and they're phrasing it this way, well then phrase it the way that they're phrasing it. So I got a lot of friends that play as far as rudimental drummers, like uh, I think of uh, Scott Johnson with the Blue Devils. Y'all know who that is? Mm -hmm. yeah. So when I play with Scott Johnson, I gotta tighten all my diddles up. There's no slurring. He doesn't like to play him that way. And then if I play with Pat Petrillo, yeah. I gotta open everything up. It's funky, he's funkier. Yeah. It's a funkier sound. And then so that's, that's just with drummers, but you can, <laughs> with whatever music you're playing. Yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, to just expound upon what John's talking about, right? Six stroke roll, let's, let's take a drag, right? Played with brushes, right? So. It's a good idea, play all your rolls with brushes. Play all the Wilcoxon with brushes. Yeah, so, so here's, here's a drag, right? Hand to hand, or half drag, right? Some people call it a rough, some people get very angry when you call it a rough. <laughs> you know what this is, rough and a drag is? Wow. I mean, I mean, I mean uh, this is kind of semantics, but it isn't really. A rough is single stroke. Right. And, and the drag, drag is diddles. Stroke. Yeah. So here's, here's, a single, here's a single half drag, okay, hand to hand. This is okay, but. That's not so great, okay? Musically. So what if we took it and we rounded out the phrasing, played it with jazz phrasing, rolling it into triplets, like Joe Morello calls it, right? So now I'm accenting the last diddle. I did that by habit. What if we just did this? Not so musical, it's not great. What if we played it with the diddles with the right hand and then played it the accents with the left? That's cool. Now what if we elvenize it, right? 
which is take those diddles, close them up, and put them on the second triplet partial, right? Same thing. That's a lot hipper, though. enjoyed this video please hit the like button as well as the notification bell so you can be notified when I post future lessons and videos here on my YouTube channel. I would love to have you come check out StantonMoreDrumAcademy.com. I have over 20 hours of video lessons there as well as over 300 pages of written lessons as well. I would love to have you join and become part of the SMDA community. Thank you all for checking this out. See you down the line.